If you have your Bibles, turn to the Gospel of Matthew. It's Father's Day. Um, they say I was listening to a, a guy on TikTok and he said, Father's Day is the 16th most popular holiday in America. He said, Father's Day shows up behind Arbor Day. And he said, I don't know what an arbor is, but somehow, how did Father's Day end up behind Arbor Day? Um, I, when Steve asked me to preach, I was kind of struggling. I'll be honest with you. I was struggling because we were supposed to do sermons that pertain to the events. You know, we do a Memorial Day service. We do various services. And Father's Day, it's tough. Um, guys, has it gotten tougher to be a father? Women are going, no. You know, I, 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 as a guy, it, it seems like it's gotten tougher. It, it, used to, we had heroes growing up. You know, I love John Wayne. Does anybody else love John Wayne? I, I, I was watching a thing on John Wayne. He was a man's man. And just really, you go, you got to love John Wayne. But today, we don't have those kind of heroes. Uh, we live in a time where the father's kind of a, almost a joke. Um, you think about it, if you watch, I, I don't watch much TV anymore, but those, the images of what a father is and who a father is supposed to be has kind of become a source of ridicule, or at least that's what it feels like. Um, but a father does important things, and one of the things that my dad did with me, one of the things I've done with Connor and with Janie is, is I love to fish, love being out on the water, being in boats and things like that. And so I was thinking about that and praying about it, and when I came across these verses and I was reminded, one of the things that a father does is he encourages you to take risks. Did you know that? In the development of children, mothers are very, very protective. But if there's going to be somebody that's going to grab the kid and go, boom, who is it? Dads. Moms don't tend to do that. Uh, who's going to wrestle with the kid on the floor? Dads. Uh, and that's an important role that a father does in the development of children. And children are there and they're learning from fathers because the father is that person that's going to say, it's okay to try. They're going to push them to do things. They're going to tell them, this is how you ride your bike. And you got to just keep working at it. It's going to be okay. That's one of the roles that a father does. And I'm not saying, please don't think I'm not. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that women don't do these things. But women tend to be more protective. They tend to be more concerned with the child's safety and security. Whereas a father tends to be one that will push them. Um, and as I thought about this, I came across these verses and I kind of want to set it up. They've just fed 5,000 people. Jesus has just fed 5,000 people in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 22. As soon as the meal was finished, he insisted that disciples get in the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the people. With the crowd dispersed, he climbed the mountain so he could be by himself and pray. He stayed there alone late into the night. Meanwhile, the boat was far out to sea when the wind came up against them, and they were battered by the waves. About four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. They were scared out of their wits. A ghost, they said, crying out in terror. But Jesus was quick to comfort them. Courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. Peter, suddenly bold, said, Master, if it's really you, come to see... Call me to come to you on the water. He said, come ahead. Jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to Jesus. But when he looked down at the waves, churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand. Then he said, faint heart, what got into you? The two of them climbed in the boat and the wind died down. 
The disciples in the boat, having watched the whole thing, worshiped Jesus, saying, This is it. You're God's son for sure. Let's pray. As we look in these words, Father, challenge us, change us, help us. Move us from a place of frightened safety to a place of fierce faith, trusting that you are our daddy and you're going to catch us no matter what. Help us, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, going through life, anybody ever been afraid? Do you feel like there's a lot of fear going on in the world right now? Uh, there's a, a, a everywhere you look, uh, it, it's reiterated again and again be afraid 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 what happens when you're afraid what do you do when you become afraid freeze up don't trust run away you you try to build a wall around yourself to keep yourself safe and, and sometimes we've kind of bought into this idea inside the church that it's about safety it's about security uh, I'll be honest with you I think the the evangelical church has done a disservice to a lot of people because we've kind of painted this picture that if you just trust Jesus life is going to be smooth sailing it's not is it it's kind of like, what did Jesus invite us to? A cross. It was like when it finally dawned on me, after I'd been married about 20 years. It dawned on me. My wife and I made a promise that one of us wouldn't get out of this alive. It stuck. And I'm like, holy cow. But fear has a way of causing us to stop. But that's not what Jesus is about. He's just fed 5,000 people. And he gets to the disciples. He said, get in the boat and go to the other side. So today we're going to talk about how do we learn to walk on water. That's not frozen. How do we do it? There are certain essential things you have to have, according to this story, to walk on water that's not frozen. First, you got to have a boat. You got to have a boat, you got to have water, and you got to have a storm. Hmm. Well, let's talk about the water. In Jesus' day, in that time, in that period of time, water was not a good thing. Okay, it was a frightening thing. It was a fearful thing. They didn't like to mess with water. Okay, that's where demons hung out. Okay, it was almost a picture of Sheol. It was a bad place, and you weren't supposed to be hanging out around the water. But Peter was a fisherman. He made his living fishing, right? So he'd spent time on the water. Now, I'm not saying he was a successful fisherman, but he was a fisherman. Okay, he had his best success when Jesus showed up. All right. Uh, I remember the first story where Jesus is, Peter has fished all night. He hadn't caught anything. And if any fisherman here, have you ever fished and not caught a thing? And no, there's nothing anybody could tell you that would convince you there were actually fish in that water. Right? And if you, Jesus' introduction or Peter's introduction into Jesus, Jesus asked, can I borrow your boat? He borrows his boat so he can speak to the people that are on the hillside. He's speaking to the hillside. Peter's sitting there mending his nets. And Jesus said, now go out and cast your net in the water. So I've fished all night. Uh, there's no, sorry, 
fish ain't biting, the fish ain't out there. And he says, no, just cast your net into the water. Cast on the other side. And then he has more fish and he knows what to do. And do you know the second time that happens? It's after Jesus is raised from the dead. And Peter went back to doing what? Fishing. He went back to what's familiar to him. And you know what his success was? Nada. Didn't catch anything. Fished all night. And the guy says, try the other side. So he does. And what happens? His net's full. And it dawns on him. Hey, that's Jesus. And he dives out of the boat. The water was a frightening place. It was not a place you wanted to be. Look, I love fishing, but I'll be honest with you. There are times I get scared when I go fishing. Um, if, you were, if you were my kid, you would have a ton of stories about frightening events on the water with your father. And if Connor ever, if you ever get a chance to ask Connor about it, ask him about going kayaking down the Flint River, and he'll tell you horror stories. Fishing below the dam. Uh, the water's a dangerous place, but boats are cool, right? And Connor is wanting to buy a boat, and then I found out there are no cheap boats anymore. Has anybody else discovered that? There are no cheap boats. Uh, so Connor's wanting to buy a boat. He's probably going to wait a year and he's going to buy him a boat, which I don't understand. After all the experience he's had on the water with me, he's going to get a boat. And he says, I can't wait to take my son, Caden. I'm going, please, please, please. Matter of fact, it, it frightened me so bad, I went and bought Caden a brand new Spider-Man life vest, just in case. But boats, when you look at this story... Jesus is telling them, I'm staying here. You go on a cross, and I'll meet you on the other side. He sends them out in a boat. And when you think about it in life, does God send us out in a boat? Is the world kind of a frightening place? So, so what is the boat? Uh, the boat is really what we build. It, it, it's how we look at our life. It's It's our resources, our utilities, it's our intelligence, it's the stuff that we use to navigate life, right? So they're in the boat, and they're going across, and as they're going across, the storm comes up. Did you notice that Jesus sent them into the storm? He sent them into the storm. And the problem was is they couldn't make headway. In life, it's not if you're going to have storms. It's just when, isn't it? You're going to have storms in life. If somebody says you're not going to have storms, they're lying. Jesus told us. He said you're going to have tribulations in life. You're going to have battles in life. You may be here and you're in the midst of your storm. You may be here and you've just gotten through a storm. Or you're headed into a storm. That's life. God doesn't send us around the storms. Because storms are a part of the journey. Because what happens in the storms? You reach the point in the storms where you can't do it anymore. Have you ever been there? You hit the wall. These guys are rowing. They're rowing. They're doing everything they can to get where God told them to go. The Son of God said, you're going to the other side. And they're in the boat. And the wind is against them. Now, I'll be honest with you. I've been in the boat in storms. Connor's been with me. Maybe Connor's just bad luck. I don't know. But when storms blow up, they're frightening. Because you what you discover? Sometimes your boat can't manage the storm that's happening. 
4 o'clock in the morning. They were working their way to the other side. It shouldn't have taken that long, but the wind is against them. They're in a frightening place to begin with. The storm is coming. The waves are crashing, crashing. If it's not bad enough, what happens? They see something out there looks like a ghost walking on the water. Wow. They're going, we're just doing what we were supposed to be doing and it just got hard. And now there's a ghost coming. And Jesus shows up, and he says, Be of courage. It's me. If you're going to walk on the water, you've got to have water. Guess what? we got water. You've got a boat. I mean, it's your life. Uh, your journey, your how you navigate the world in which you live. And God's not opposed to boats. I mean, Jesus has preached out of this boat. He slept in this boat. Matter of fact, <coughs> as a matter of fact, he slept in the boat during the middle of a storm. He likes boats. He doesn't hate boats. I, I found out what kind. I, does anybody know what, who the builder of that boat that Jesus was in, you know, the manufacturer was? It was a Peterbilt. I got my dad joke in, okay? God's not opposed to boats, but our problem is, is that as human beings, we live in a world that's frightening and the battle is raging around us and we're trying to keep our boat from sinking, aren't we? The waves are coming and you know God's got something more for you, but you get afraid. The fear overwhelms you. And so you try to hold on into security. To push everything else away. Just so I can hold on. I just can't go under. But I like Peter. Peter had a disease. Anybody know what his disease was? He had foot and mouth disease. He was always putting his foot in his mouth. But Peter says, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. I'll be honest. I would like to be like Peter, but I'll be honest with you. I'm probably more like the other disciples that are sitting in the boat going, I'm glad he's here. I don't want to go walking on the water. I admit it. I don't want to get my feet wet. I'm one of those people that goes through life trying to make the road as easy or the sea as easy as I possibly can. I kayak a lot, and you know what? I'm always watching the wind. I'm always watching the water. And I am looking for the easiest path to get to my destination. That's me. But I sure would like to be a little bit more like Peter. Because what did Peter do? He got out of his boat. He got out of his comfort zone. The wind was still blowing. The waves were still rocking. And he said, if it's you, tell me to come. And everybody focuses on the fact when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus... He noticed the waves and he noticed the wind. He started to sink. And that's true. But what I love about the story is that it says immediately Jesus reached out to save him. So when you take the risk, if you say, God, I want to go further. I want to move past fear. I want to move into faith. I want to move to the point where I trust you with all that I have. I want to trust you with my boat. But I also want to be able to leave the boat behind. And walk 
as you would walk. He's calling us to faith in Him. And the beauty of this story is not that Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. The beauty of the story is that Jesus did what He does. He saves. See, folks, we have a father. Spirit says, by the Spirit, we call him Daddy. And you know what? A good father, he'll let you go through storms. He will. A good father will let you scrape your knees when you fall off your bike. He won't cover you in plastic. He'll let you get bumps and bruises. He'll let you get hurt so you can learn. But more than just learn, but grow. And trust. That's what he wants. He's called us to trust him. I don't know where you are. I don't know if you're in the middle of a storm right now. But I can tell you something. He has never left you. He has never forsaken you. He's never, never quit. He said, I am with you always. The problem is, is that when we get into our storms, our tendency is to redouble our efforts, isn't it? I've got to turn this ship this way. It's going to be a little bit easier if I go this way. Or I've got to turn it this way. Or I've got to give it more gas. Or I've got to find a cove. I've got to do something to get out of this storm. But I believe that when we are in storms, that's when he shows up. And that is the moment that we're most likely to see him. Yesterday. I was out on Smith Lake kayaking. Man, it was a beautiful day. It was absolutely gorgeous. The water was perfect. And there's no stories to tell about it. But I can tell you story after story when I've been in storms. I, I remember there was a time Connor went with me down Flint River. Him and Terry... His best friend, we were going down the Flint River. The water was up. We came up to the road, and there's a road that the Flint River runs. Well, it's supposed to run under, but it was running over. And we were going through that road, got up to it, and I told Connor and Terry, well, y'all just poured it. Y'all take the, can take the canoe over there and then drop it down in the safe water. Well, all of a sudden, Terry, big, big friend of Connor's, the best man at his wedding, Stout guy. All of a sudden, I see Terry. His eyes get big. Poof, and all of a sudden, he goes down. The back of the canoe, he's holding on to the canoe. And I'm Connor's being picked up out of the water. And Terry lets go. And all that's left is his life jacket. And Connor starts to move towards him. And I'm saying, Con And then all of a sudden, Joom. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. He got sucked through a culvert. And poor Terry comes up on the other side. He's lost his swim trunks. <laughs> and I don't know what it is, but anytime there's some sort of catastrophe that happens, there's always bird watchers out there. <laughs> and Terry comes up, and he's doing this. And Connor, and I'm glad Terry came through, and Connor comes through too, right? Not long after him, except he kept his swim trunks. I don't know how. But it was a frightening moment. It was a scary moment. It was a storm, but there's a story to tell. I love what C.S. Lewis said. 
He said, no adventure is fun when you're going through it. But look back at your life. Your life really has been, has been written by the storms of life, haven't they? And where was Jesus? He was right there, wasn't he? Look at your storms. You may not have seen him, not the way you thought you would see him, but he was there. Did he let you drown? Did he take you out of the storm? No. He went with you. You got to have water. You got to have a boat. You got to have a storm. And I can't say that I know how to walk on water that's not frozen. I don't. I, I really don't. But I can tell you there have been moments when it felt like I was walking on water. It's those moments where I forget about myself. I forget about me. And all I see is Jesus. It's not my effort. It's not my knowledge. It's not my wisdom. It's not my learning. It's when I forget about myself. And I'm lost in praise of my daddy who has seen me through battle after battle after battle. And you know what? He's going to see me through a lot more. And you know what? With every battle, I learn to trust him a little bit more. Because there's a lot of times when my boat sinks. And you know what? He didn't walk up and knock me upside the head and call me stupid. He reaches out his hand. He picks me up. But there are those moments when I lose sight of the storm, where I lose sight of all the trouble, all the fear, all those things that are overwhelming me, and I can set my eyes on him. And I'll take that step. Because I've forgotten about me. All I see is him. I want to get my feet wet, folks. I don't want to be consumed by fear. I don't want to be overwhelmed by what may or may not happen. I want to forge forward with faith. Knowing, guess what? I may fail. I may fail. Guess what? Failure's not bad. What happens in failure? You learn you can't do it. Can you save yourself with yourself? No. You find out who can. That's Jesus. And he's there. Instead of redoubling your efforts, maybe you're in a storm and you're thinking, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this. Maybe it's taking time to step back and say, no matter what happens, I know my daddy's going to catch me. He's letting the storm come, not to defeat you, but to grow you. But more than that, to show you himself. You're loved. And your father will always catch you. He won't let you fall. He'll let you fail. But he won't let you fall. Let's pray. Father, Daddy, help us. Lord, I pray for those who are going through storms right now. I pray for them. Father, that they will begin looking for you. For those that are approaching storms, Father, I pray that they will find you in the storm. 
for those whose storms have passed, that you'll open their eyes to see where you were in their storm, even when they weren't looking. That you are a faithful father, a good father, a loving father, an awesome father. You're the perfect father. Help us to replace fear with faith.